Hi everyone, it's Michael. Today um, I am showing you my basting method. Um, this is what I do um, when I want to baste the whole quilt prior to doing any quilting on it. And I might do this for several reasons. One is that I may want to be using my Baptist fan set, which if you've watched me enough by now, you know I like to do those from the bottom to the top. So it just helps to base the whole quilt to start with and then I can quilt from bottom to top and not worry about it. The other thing is, um, what if I only have one long arm frame? What if I need to do a quick project in between a, a longer project? And like this project is um, a medium to heavy custom quilting project. So, you know, it may be necessary for me to do a quick project in between. So therefore, um, if I base the whole thing, I can take it off and then put it back again. Um, and have it still be stabilized. So um, here's the setup. Um, I'm, I'm about in the middle, but I'm gonna show you some footage from the beginning, because I did film it. I just didn't talk while I filmed it. Um, and, um, okay, I'm using the line minder. This is the long arm line minder. And I use this when I um, load my backings and when I do um, my all over basting and sometimes when I'm quilting just in general as well. So it has, <clears throat> it has toggles and I mark the sides, both sides with a toggle so I can keep track as I'm advancing the quilt to make sure I'm lined up correctly. This is what the long arm line minder looks like um, when it's in use. Some people like it up here. Some people like it down here. These toggles, you just squeeze them and line it up where you want. And then I can adjust um, these other ones where I want. So on this one, I have it on the sashing here. I have this middle one. It lines up with the center of the star. Um, this one is on the sashing on the other side, and then this one is on the edge. So anyway, um, it can be very helpful. And this I can take on and remove whenever I want. Okay, so that's the long arm line minder. Then um, I do... Um, attach my side leaders but what's happened now is i've just quilted this pass so i'm showing you how i advance um so i'm going to advance it and while i'm advancing remember i float my tops that's why we're doing a video this way so you can see what i do with them while i'm advancing i advance until i can see my basting stitch and i know how far up my machine can go so i'm going to stop right about here Okay, I'm gonna get good tension on my back. Now, <coughs> what, excuse me, what I do with my tops, if I'm floating them, is um, I like to fold them up after each advance to make sure I'm square. And then I also like to, see this is a great thing to do uh, to check your batting, to make sure that you don't have, like I had, there was a line in there. Um, I lift up my top, I look at my batting. So I'm folding the top up just to see where it's square and see this part of my batting I need to pull over. So I smooth out my batting. Batting is smooth. Okay. And the top I have folded up to be square and it looks like we're going to be fine and then I bring my top back down okay then I'm going to attach my side leaders if you do this system I usually like to use five pins and there we go okay so I already know with this quilt and with many others um, I've got a little bit of waviness in the borders um, on the sides so I'll show you how I always handle those okay everything else I'm smoothing out okay so what I'm going to do, whenever I um, baste the sides, I like to go from bottom to top. And I, I never want to push the fullness down. Um, 
I'm, I'm more about containing the fullness within where it is. So there's, there's a couple things that you can do. Sometimes when I base the sides, I'll do a zigzag base. And in between the zigzags, you, you can get the, the fullness there. Um, but more often than not, and I make sure I take my ruler base off so I don't have a extended base plate on right now. I do have my ruler foot just because I always do. All right, so I go down to wherever the furthest I can bring my machine and start a stitch here. Now, um, I have my machine set on two for the length and I've loosened my tension. So that's the basting stitch that I like on the Innova. I don't, you, you do whatever kind of basting stitch you like. Um, but the idea is that this is nice and loose. Tension is loose. These are big stitches. You want to be able to take these out really fast um, and not spend any time on it. Okay, so you don't need it to squish the sandwich together. You're just trying to hold the pieces together. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to push down on the fabric in front so that as I go backwards, I am easing in any fullness till I get up to the top. There we go. Okay, so now, and I may run into trouble with this, with this border, who knows. Now I'm gonna start my meander. So I'm doing a very loose meander. And try to think of diagonals instead of up and down so I'm doing this diagonal now I'm going up this way I know you can't see a lot of it when we're on the light colored fabric because I've got this light thread in it um, I'm using now this is very just very loose and easy I'm using a 40 weight thread in the top for this and you could also in bobbin if you want um, a nice uh, you know thicker thread that's easy to pull out is fine you don't want to use your best finest thread because this is all coming out. I still use a nice high quality thread, but it's going in the trash <laughs> when we're done. Okay, so I'm just doing this meander and when I see um, from the previous row up there, I'm getting close to it, I just don't cross over it because there's no need to. Um, so again, it's not everywhere you know I'm just doing a really light basting all over when I get to the side I like to go leave space so that I can go up and then I can go down and I can make my last part go up remember because I'm at the very edge so here we go I'm using my fingers any fullness I am taking care of by doing it that way and I've gotten to the top Okay. okay, so here is about a minute and a half of sped up footage <laughs> from what I had filmed uh, of my quilting prior to starting the YouTube video. If you want to skip over it, skip for about a minute and you should be caught up and then we'll talk about what to do at the uh, bottom of the quilt. All right, enjoy. When I can see the bottom of the quilt near the front bar or just a little bit past the front bar, then I like to go ahead and go ahead and advance all the way so that I have access to the bottom 
and then I know that I've got oh like seven or eight inches further up that I didn't baste yet but I take care of this first and that's just because sometimes when you are basting and quilting and pushing everything down that very bottom edge can be the most roughly wavy border that you get and I would rather like I said I'd rather contain it and kind of distribute it within the quilt instead of making one side um, having the excess okay so so I'm at the middle and the bottom and I start here and I'm, I'm gonna go one direction to the side and up and then I'm gonna go back and start here again and go the other way okay so I'm gonna go to the right on this pass so here we go and I'm walking my fingers just like we did on the sides that's taken care of all the fullness and now I'm gonna walk my fingers and keep them down below as I go up just like we always do okay so now we're back where we started and I'm just gonna go the other direction using my fingers on this other side Trying to catch up. Okay, and using my fingers at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and bring the quilt down so that I have access to that part that I missed. And I will be a good quilter and put my side leaders on okay um, we'll do the other side and at this point I can take off my line minder because I've got that all done Okay, we're good? I think so. Okay, I'm going to finish going up this side. Oops. Okay, and now it's meander time. Really, just it's just like doing stippling, you know, when you're quilting little puzzle pieces. And um, it doesn't really matter how you do it. I just try to think of diagonal wavy lines going across the whole width. Boy, I see lots of threads I'm going to have to take care of. Not too bad, though. Sorry, Carrie. <laughs> this is my this is my client Carrie's quilt. <laughs> She's been waiting for it forever, but she gave me a long a long lead time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this side part that I missed. And then I'm gonna come back and basically the whole perimeter is basted now, so I I feel good about that. I'm going to advance and uh-oh, gotta take off the side. This goes so fast, it feels like just a second ago I was pinning these on. Um, so really you can tell this process is a quick one. And there's no need for perfection. There is a need though to get it basted without big tucks in the back <laughs> and a big wad of batting somewhere <laughs> that you weren't expecting you know so you do have to watch out for that but if you look at the if you look at the back of the quilt like I can see some of the stitches from the underneath uh, it's you can tell the tension's horrible and that's fine that's what you want for this we are not 
quilting we're basting okay so I will keep up with good habits and go ahead and pin this back on those of you with side leaders I'm sure you could tell me how fast it is to put your ready edge on or your side grips <laughs> and I know it is fast but that doesn't bother me okay so, okay so I'm back there we've got good tension everywhere and now I'm just gonna fill in and go back Yeah, I can see some fullness here that I'll be quilting out, but it's it will all be manageable. Okay. It's basted. The entire quilt is basted. So, yeah, if I were doing Baptist fans, here we go. I'd start from the bottom and go up. Okay, for this one, though, I'm going to start in the center um, because I have some ideas for it, and I want to get there first. So now that I've basted the whole quilt, it's not going to shift from the backing and the batting. Okay, so that's, that's done. Within this, I told you there's some fullness, and I, I knew that there was some fullness. I will have to take care of that when I get to these areas. And some of it, I can, I can see some of it here, and I saw some earlier, but really, um, it's not going to be a problem. So just this all over meander, and then paying attention to keep the sides to where they're not wavy. It's really all that you need. Okay, so that is how I do my overall quick baste. And um, if I have clients that say they just want me to baste their quilt, they don't like to do the basting, but they want to quilt it themselves at home on their, on their sewing machines, this is what I'll do for them. Uh, the outsides are done and a nice baste on the inside with thread, and they don't have to worry about pins or spray base or anything. So, and it's fast, as you saw. Okay, the next video up um, should be some of the custom quilting that I do on this quilt, because I plan to start that right now okay so i hope everyone's doing well and i will see you next time bye bye